Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over an example showing um, how to compute ROA as well as how do we use information that we obtain from ROA to help us understand a company. So first of all, we're going to make an assumption that income tax rate is 35%. So here are three companies. We have Macy, Home Depot, and Super Value. Um, each of these represent a different type of um, business. Uh, as we all know, Macy is a department store. Uh, home Depot is a home improvement, uh, mostly big um, construction material, home improvement materials. And Super Value is a grocery chain. First, let's take a look at Macy's. So to compute ROA, we need net income for the entire company. So uh, the measure of profitability is net income plus after-tax interest expense. So we have to take net income and we need to add one minus the tax rate and uh, multiply that by interest income. In our particular example, the tax rate is 35%. So we can put that right here. So one minus 0.35 times interest expense. So these two together will give us the profit measure. And the denominator is total assets. So for Macy's to compute ROA, we'll take net income, in this case it's a loss, um, of $4,803 plus one minus the 35% times interest expense of $588 divided by average total asset of $24,968. So that's negative 17.71%. To look at the decomposition, we're going to compute both um, the profit margin and asset turnover. So to compute asset turnover um, or profit margin first, so profit margin will be um, the profit available. So once again, net income plus after-tax in uh, interest divided by sales, they'll give us the uh, profit margin. And then when we take sales and divide that by total asset, that will give us um, total asset turnover. So for Macy, so once again, the first item, um, pro profit remains the same, uh, but sales is 24,892. And then the turnover is sales, 24,892 divided by total asset of 24,967. So we see in here that um, uh, Macy's has a negative profit margin, not surprising. Um, it also has a very slow turnover. So in this case, it's actually adding to its advantage because it's not losing as much money. Next, let's take a look at Home Depot. So Home Depot's um, profit, um, it does have a positive net income. So it has profit and we have to, once again, add the after tax. So one minus 0.35 times 624 uh, interest expense. So net income plus after tax interest expense divided by total assets. So it has a ROA of 6.24%. Next, we're going to look at the same decomposition. So what that means is we're going to look at the profit margin and then, which is based on sales of 71,000 uh, 71, uh, and also the turnover. So just a, a simple glance here tells you that uh, Home Depot will have a much higher turnover. And that turns out to be true. Uh, Home Depot has a turnover of 1.6678. So the profit margin for Home Depot is only 4.05%. But because it has a healthy turnover, it has an overall ROA of 6.24%. Finally, let's take a look at super value. So just a glance, we notice that it's also losing money. Um, and when we look at sales relative to average total asset, um, 
is sales is much greater than total asset, which means that you have a much higher turnover. And that is to be expected because this is a, a grocery train. So let's take a look at is ROA. Um, so our uh, net profit, um, including after-tax interest, is negative, and we have an overall ROA of negative 12.64%. But what we are really interested in is understanding what is driving ROA. So let's take a look at that. When we decompose it, we notice that um, the profit margin for this firm is actually minus 4.99%. So its profit margin is about minus 5%. But because its turnover is so high, it has a turnover of 2.3, you end up with an ROA of negative 12.64%. So we see in here that turnover is a magnifier. So when things are good, when you're earning a profit uh, or you have a positive pro uh, profit margin, the turnover can increase uh, your overall ROA. But when you're losing money, the turnover um, also exacerbate that. So if you're losing money on every item, the more item you sell, then the greater will be your losses. In this example, we saw that just by decomposing ROA into the two component, profit margin and uh, asset turnover, give us more information. Next, let's take a look at what we can do if we want to look deeper into a company's finances. So as a turnover, um, there are many types of asset turnover and is, and is a very uh, useful tool for us to measure the efficiency of a, of a company. Um, and the um, standard uh, obviously vary by industry because um, uh, there are ways that you conduct business uh, depending on the industry you're in and, uh, and, you, and also depends on whether or not you choose to use a higher overhead and a more, uh, and which may lead to a higher um, turnover or a, uh, or, a, or a lower overhead and that can lead to a, a lower turnover. Uh, I write in here, watch out for too much efficiency. Too much efficiency means that you may be put, the company may be pushing itself to the limit and there's not a whole lot to be gained. And sometimes that can even be um, a drawback. Uh, one of the things that we typically find when we see a company that's operating at much higher turnover rate than its competitor is an indicator that the company may be operating very close to capacity and therefore they will have to invest significantly in um, in assets in order to continue to grow. So it's not so much that too much efficiency is necessarily bad, but sometimes that may be an indication of needing um, huge investments in order to grow. So here are some uh, very common turnover measures that is useful. Uh, accounts receivable turnover, this measures how, uh, how fast a company can collect from its customers. Uh, inventory turnover, as the name implied, this is probably one that management look at a lot. Both of these are very important in terms of managing the company's um, um, current assets. And then fixed assets turnover, um, that is, um, this is particularly important. So when we talk about too much efficiency, fixed asset turnover is one item that you want to keep an eye on because if this is too high or much, much higher than the competitors, then there's a good chance that the company may be operating close to capacity. So asset turnover or efficiency measure is one category. The other category is profit margin. And we have seen that. So once again, when we try to benchmark this, we need to take into account the industry that the company is in. Uh, typically, if you are, uh, for example, a grocery store, you can expect a much lower profit margin uh, compared to a department store. So the uh, characteristic is varied by industry. Also, the level of competition in the industry and whether or not the company decided to choose a cost leader strategy or a profit differentiation strategy. 
um, if a company is enjoying very high profit margin, um, then one of the things that you need to watch out for is are there potential new entrants? So for example, the current degree of competition may be low, it's a new industry, so the company is enjoying very high profit margin. Um, as new entrants come into the market, that will oftentimes depress profit margin. Uh, there are other ratios um, that relates to profit margin that are very useful. For example, uh, contribution margin uh, or cost of goods sold ratio. So cost of goods sold divided by sales is the cost of goods sold ratio and one minus that is the contribution margin. Uh, this is how much the company generate uh, for each dollar of sales um, to, that enables the company to cover other kinds of overhead. Um, one of the major overhead is obviously SG&A, selling and administrative expenses, um, as a percentage of sales. So this measures um, the overhead burden on the firm. Um, you can also look at expense ratio in the income statement. That will be very help, uh, helpful to identify where the most um, drains are in terms of profit. And then finally, if you, your company um, report by segment, we, we looked at that earlier, um, segment analysis is particularly useful for manager because um, that's the, each segment is what they are personally have responsibility and also authority over. Unfortunately for investors uh, or external investors, um, that level of detail is often not, not available because a lot of these are non-GAAP measures. So once again, if it's a non-GAAP measure, then it's not required by the company to disclose to the public. We have seen the example from um, our last three company, um, Macy's, Home Depot, and Super Value. And we saw that they have different ROA uh, due to profit margin and total asset turnover. Next, we're going to take a look at this individual ratios and see if that gives us more information. So here, it, here are the information that we have again. Um, so we, ha we happen to have cost of goods show data and inventory data. So we can take a look at that. So if you take cost of goods sold divided by sales, so remember one minus that is our profit margin. Just based on the industry, uh, we'll expect that Macy's will have a higher contribution margin, meaning that they will have a lower cost of goods sold ratio relative to a, a grocery store like super value. And if you look at the ratio that we computed, uh, and that indeed turned out to be the case. So Macy has a cost of goods sold ratio of 60%, whereas super value is 77%. So much lower profit margin for super value. Home Depot happens to be in between the two. Once again, contribution margin ratio is one minus the cost of goods sold ratio. So um, that may that make more, uh, more, more sense or more intuitive for a lot of us. So Macy has a higher contribution margin ratio compared to super value. Uh, next, we can take a look at inventory turnover. So again, this is average. This is sales divided by average inventory. Um, again, based on the um, industry they're in, we'll expect um, Macy's to have a lower turnover compared to a grocery store. So once again, we'll see that uh, inventory turnover for Macy's is five times. Um, is slightly higher for Home Depot. Um, and then very high for super value. As we expected, you don't want the goods for a grocery store to be sitting on the shelf very long. And then finally, we can look at fixed assets turnover. And this is a little bit more difficult to, um, to compare simply based on their um, operating characteristics um, because um, it you have to drill down into the ownership. So for example, um, Macy typically does not own the physical store that is located in, it rent from uh, 
from a mall, uh, whereas Home Depots oftentimes own their own building. Uh, so it's slightly uh, more difficult to compare for fixed assets turnover. But in this case, um, not surprisingly, um, Macy and Home Depot follow the same pattern, uh, much, much lower than super value. But the difference is not nearly as, as great as um, inventory turnover. And again, that makes sense. We'll conclude this video here. In the next video, we're going to continue discussing the, and, um, another profitability measure that is very important, and that is return on equity. See you soon.